it down. Hi, I'm Alexis Goldstein here for Channel 98 and We Act Radio, and today we're going to be talking about the proposed $13 billion settlement by J.P. Morgan Chase with the Department of Justice. This settlement is about making a bunch of open investigations go away that are alleging that J.P. Morgan Chase committed securities fraud in their selling of mortgage-backed securities. In plain language, that means that J.P. Morgan lied about the quality of some products that they were selling. Before we go any further, let's explain what a mortgage-backed security is. In the old world, the bank that gave you the mortgage would also receive the monthly mortgage payments. But then Wall Street got involved, and they said, let's take a thousand mortgages or thousands of mortgages and put them in a box, and let's call that box a mortgage-backed security. And now every month, the monthly mortgage payments will go to this box. Investors can then buy chunks of that box, and they will receive the monthly payments from the homeowners. These are the securities that J.P. Morgan Chase is in trouble for misrepresenting and making fraudulent statements about. $13 billion may sound like a lot of money, but it's not when you look into how many investigations will be closed after this settlement. They include the Federal Housing and Finance Agency's lawsuit against J.P. Morgan for selling them $33 billion of crappy mortgage-backed securities. It includes the New York Attorney General's claims that investors lost $22.5 billion because of crappy mortgage-backed securities that J.P. Morgan sold them. And it will also include the shutting of an investigation in California into whether or not J.P. Morgan committed both civil and criminal offenses because of their selling of crappy mortgage-backed securities. Now, the good news is the settlement does not immunize J.P. Morgan from future criminal charges. But you should know that Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan, has been getting really cozy with Attorney General Eric Holder. He's been having personal phone calls with Holder and staff at the Justice Department since as early as July, negotiating his own settlement. That's like a child negotiating with their parent over what their punishment should be for burning down the house and crashing the family car. And it's not like the Justice Department is dealing with a first-time offender. To name just three things that J.P. Morgan has done over the last four months, they were fined $410 million for manipulating the electricity markets. Then they were charged $309 million for illegal credit card practices. And as recently as October, they were fined $100 million for their manipulation of the credit derivatives market in the London Whale case. If J.P. Morgan Chase had been committing petty drug crimes, their recidivism rate would have landed them in jail for the rest of the company's existence. We need to let the Justice Department know that they should not be negotiating with people they are openly investigating. Otherwise, we may as well rename the Justice Department the J.P. Morgan Chase Field. Instead, we need more than just fines. We need criminal charges for Chase. If this pisses you off the way it pisses me off, I hope you'll join me in tweeting at the Justice Department. Or you can join me at this link. That's breaking it down for this week. Please be sure to subscribe to Channel 98 and follow us at Other98 on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Break it down.